Family Theatre presents William Bendix, Harold Perry, and Nancy Gates. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theatre, presents The Fable of the Perfect Princess, starring William Bendix, Harold Perry, and Nancy Gates. To introduce the drama, here is your host and narrator, William Bendix. Thank you, Tony Lafano. Family Theatre's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Fable of the Perfect Princess, starring Harold Perry as the king and Nancy Gates as the princess, and featuring Verna Felton as the queen and Billy Balcom as Sir William. Once upon a time, in a far-off country, a baby was born. Nothing so strange about that, you might say, and you'd be right. Except that this baby was the firstborn of a very important king. Would you like to see your heir, your majesty? Ah, uh, yes, my queen. Well, cute little dickens, isn't he? Gitchy, gitchy. Here, let me hold the little tot. Oh, careful. You know, I think I'll name him after me, Albert II. Be as fine a king as I am. Uh, but, Your Majesty, mm? didn't you know this child will never be king? No? Gitchy, gitchy. No. It's a girl. A girl? Well, that's nice. A girl! Back in those days, they didn't know that girls were every bit as good as boys. You see, this was a long time ago. But Albert was a just king. A girl. Well, what if she is a girl? By George, I'll see to it that she's the wisest, most intelligent princess that ever lived. That when on the time comes, she'll be as good a ruler as the people could want. And King Albert was true to his word. Through the years that followed, only the greatest teachers were hired to instruct the beautiful princess, Diane. In music. In mathematics. And in all the other arts and sciences. And she was an excellent student. In fact, she was as beautiful as any girl had ever been, and much more intelligent. And whenever a grand ball was held, knights would come hundreds of miles to pay their respects and have a try at capturing her heart. But no matter how hard they tried, not a one of them ever did, till one night... And this, your majesty, is... Oh, yes, of course, Sir Humphrey. Oh, you remember me, your majesty? Well, of course I do. We met three years ago at my 18th birthday party. I believe you had a slight cold then. I do hope you're fully recovered. Why, why, yes, I did. Thank you very much. And, uh, Sir Glidden, Your Majesty. Most certainly. How do you do, Your Majesty? I think the occasion was the Grand Ball eight years ago. I heard about your accident, Sir Glidden. You fell from a bridge in full armor. How are you feeling? Well, uh, aside from a slight ringing sensation, quite well, thank you. I'm flattered that Your Majesty should remember me. And, uh, Sir William from one of the uh, Western Kingdom. Howdy, ma'am. Uh, Sir William, uh, wasn't it... Oh, uh... no, no, ma'am. You've never met me. Well, then I'm, I'm pleased to have this opportunity. It's mutual, I'm sure. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'd better be getting along. Goodbye, Glad, Hump. It's nice meeting you, Princess. Eh, I say, he seems rather to be leaving. What an extraordinary thing to do. Well, from all accounts, Your Highness, Sir William is uh, not a very ordinary young man. No. No, he, he certainly isn't. Well, what else did you find out about him, Mother? Oh, I don't see what you see in him, and there are so many kings and princes around just begging you to look their way. Hmm, that's just it. He's so, well, so different. He's the first man I've met since I was 15 who, well... Hasn't proposed? Well, maybe he's married. Mm, that's what you'll have to help me find out. I don't know about this. Oh, please, what Mother. What do you want me to do? Well, he knows me, but he doesn't know you. So, if you'll just... Oh, 
there. Hold stand still. Good morning. Morning. My, that's a fine-looking horse you've got there. Uh, thanks. A uh, gift from your wife, perhaps? Got him as a Christmas bonus a couple of years ago. Oh. Uh, well, well, what's his name? Name? Hasn't got a name. No name. Huh. What do you call him? Horse, mostly. <laughs> hmm, that's rather strange. Not at all. You see, this way everything's on an impersonal basis. Strictly business. Chances are, if we were friends, we'd always be imposing on each other. In this business, that can be fatal. So you just call him Horse? Horse. Was it your wife's idea? My idea. Nice morning, isn't it? Looks bright. Most mornings are. I, I meant your horse. Oh. Uh, he seems to be very intelligent. Is this the horse on which you performed all your deeds of bravery? <laughs> you must be thinking about somebody else, ma'am. But you are Sir William. That's my name. But I've heard about some of the things you've done. Just doing my job. Not much bravery involved. You've never been afraid? Well, uh, just once, when I was on a fishing trip over in Scotia, ran into a thing they call a uh, Loch Ness Monster. Then you were afraid for uh, your lady, I suppose? By myself, fishing trip. I was just afraid for a minute, then I got mad. He upset my boat and made me lose the biggest lake trout you ever saw. Why, it's this long. My. Someday I'm going to go back and knock his teeth out. The fish? No, the monster. Oh. Well, I suppose the tail would make a fine prize for your lady. No, mm-mm. You don't have a lady? The thing didn't have a tail. Oh. I seem to remember it having a head at each end. Well, I suppose you could take back something to your wife or sweetheart. He had horns, didn't he? All over. Well, one of them would make a nice trophy for a loved one. Well, maybe, but I don't really have any loved ones. No wife or anything? Nope. Oh, that's splendid. <laughs> well, what do you mean? <laughs> Look, ma'am, I, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, don't you think you're a little too old for me? Oh, my heavens. I wasn't thinking of myself, Sir William. I, I was speaking for the Princess Diane. Princess Diane? She wants you to wear her colors at the Royal Jousting Matches next Saturday. Wear her colors? Mm -hmm. No, 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 ma'am. I, I couldn't do that. Oh, but any knight in the kingdom would give his white teeth to wear her colors. No, uh, she's too perfect for me. You see, uh, 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 come a little closer, will you? I, I don't want this to get around too much. No, 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 of course. What is it? Uh, I'm not a very good knight. No? Uh, uh, let me explain it to you. Uh, you see, uh, I'll... Furthermore, he said he wouldn't dare have anything to do with you but for me to tell you diplomatically. Did he really say that? Well, confound it, Henrietta. Why didn't you put it uh, diplomatically? With my own daughter. <laughs> what does that tin-plated Casanova want? She speaks ten languages, never forgets a name or a face, knows music and all the other arts and sciences, hasn't made a mistake in grammar since she was three years old. That's what Sir William said. Well, what does he want? He says I'm too perfect. He seems to think just having you around would give him an, an inferiority complex, whatever that is. Well, if he'd pass up a girl like you, he obviously hasn't got good sense. Put him out of your mind, my dear. Oh, but, Father, I, I think I'm in love with him. Nonsense. Put him out of your mind. That's an order. I don't want to hear the matter again. The Princess Diane was an obedient girl. And so she tried very hard to put Sir William out of her mind, but she couldn't do it. So instead she moped. And because she was much loved by the people of the kingdom, all who saw her also began to mope in sympathy. So finally, the king could stand it no longer. All right, all right, I give up. If this man means so much to you, then by George, you'll get it. Summon the royal wizards. <laughs> Well, you all know the problem, fellas. Is there an answer? A uh, love potion or something? Love, love potion. potion? Well? Your, your Highness, Highness, with respects to you, there's no, no such thing. thing. It's, it's just not true. true. No such thing? No, no miss. From, From the, the way, way it looks, looks they're, they're only found in storybooks. Well, is there some other way? Oh, yes, there must be some other way. Other, other way? way. Well? The only, only way, Your Highness, we account for William Shyness is, is to, to point, point out, out all the items that seem unprone to deny them. 
Unprone? Mm. Since Diane reached the age of two, she's done more than she ought to do. Of studying of the universe and differential calculus. Of art and every other thing till now. She's smarter than the king. Now, see here. You boys can be replaced, you know. We're, We're so, so sorry, sorry to unflatter, but, but we think that's what's the matter. matter. Well, of course that's what's wrong, but well, how can we change it? Yes, if you got any ideas. She's, She's so very nearly perfect that, that we must be metamorphic. Yep. With, With her, her so smart, smart that he feels stupid, stupid there's, there's no, no single, single chance for Cupid. Cupid. So, as, as wizards, wizards we'd advise her, play it dumb till he grows wiser. In short, one of them's absolutely got to change. You mean we have to make him think he's as good as she is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've capsulized the answer, King. By doing that, we might solve the thing. But how can we do that? Yeah. With a jousting match coming up Saturday, I think we can handle it. Nothing illegal now, Father dear. Illegal? Why, of course not, Princess. Never fear. <laughs> now I'm doing it. then. <laughs> Get your programs for the jousting matches. Programs here. Come on, Get Father. We'll miss the start. Uh, you go on, my dear. I uh, want to have a word with your mother. All right. But... Henrietta, <laughs> you go to the field master and tell him that I want Sir William to fight first, and then the winner to meet all, meet all comers. All comers? No, no human being could. Shh, keep your voice down. He'll fight every night here. But there are 25 of the best. He can't. Of course he can't, unless he gets some help. Here, take this money and pay every night but Sir William to lose. Oh, a jousting fix. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't make him feel perfectly good enough for our daughter, I'll eat my crown. Coming, Father? Mm -hmm. um, hurry along, Rian, Henrietta. I'm coming. <laughs> First event of this afternoon's tournament will be the Lance Charge. Yeah! With the kingdoms, with the kingdom's own Sir Gledon matched against Sir William from the Western Kingdom. Yeah! Doesn't he look wonderful? He'll look even better later. Oh, look, here they come. <laughs> yeah. The winner of the first match, Sir William of the Western Kingdom, who will now be matched against Sir Newton Suttonfield. In... of this afternoon's tournament, Sir William. Diane? Come in. My dear, our little... Oh, hello, Mr. Chamberlain. Uh, your Majesty. Oh, wasn't he wonderful, Father? Defeating 25 of your best knights. Nothing like it has ever happened before. Wasn't he just wonderful? What I paid, he should have been. Pardon me? Yeah? I said uh, a man like that will always win. Yeah, really, Princess Diane, we're never going to get finished unless you give me your attention. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, what's all this? Well, he's helping me learn some things, Father. Oh, perhaps, Your Highness, we should say unlearn. Unlearn? Oh, no, as I like that. Well, it was Mother's idea. That reminds me, you haven't seen the Queen. Oh, indeed I have. Nice-looking woman. I met this evening. Yeah. Oh, 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 this evening. <laughs> no, Your Highness. Is she missing? <clears throat> haven't seen her since the matches. Nothing to worry about, though. I'll go see if she's back yet. Uh, you get on with what you were uh, doing. Uh, yes. Now we'll try a terrible thing. A very imperfect. A plural first-person pronoun with a singular verb. Now, after me. Uh, we was... We was. Again? We was. <laughs> Sounds positively horrible. Now we'll try it with a double negative. Now then, uh, we wasn't uh, doing uh, nothing. We wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Here, here. Is that what you mean by unlearning? I'll not have it. 
That's one thing up with which I refuse to put. Oh, but, Father, it, it will prove to Sir William that I'm... You don't. Just leave it to me. Now, I'll see that you get this young man without having to stoop to such a... To such a... Uh, skullduggery? Exactly. Skullduggery. You just leave it to me. <laughs> we wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> After the education she's had. Albert! Henrietta, where have you been? You didn't do your job too well, my dear. Some of our boys put up too good a fight. Pretty near beat him a couple times. Here's your money. My money? Not one of our boys would take a bribe. Sir William beat them all by himself. What? Come in. Well, good evening, Sir William. I uh, hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, of course not, Your Highness. Come on in. Make yourself at home. Uh, thank you. Now, look, Sir William. Yeah? Just what is it you don't like about my daughter? I uh, beg your pardon? You know what I mean. You wouldn't wear colors at the matches today. Why, confound it, when a princess asks tonight to wear colors, it's almost tantamount to a proposal of marriage. Well, yes, sir, I know that. Well, you'll never find a better woman if I do say so myself. What do you want? Egg in your... Now, just a minute, Your Highness. Uh, don't misunderstand me. I think your daughter's all you say she is. She's the most beautiful princess I've ever seen, and without a doubt, so gracious and intelligent, she's almost... Uh, Almost, uh, Almost, uh, perfect? That's it. The Princess Diane's wonderful, and I think I'd fall in love with her if we spent any time at all together, but hang it all, would you want to marry a perfect woman? Hmm. <laughs> uh, you see what I mean? Just wouldn't work out. Uh, will you excuse me? I'd, uh, like to talk this over with, uh, some friends of mine. <laughs> so, uh, that's what the, uh, Situation is. Seems terribly hopeless, doesn't it? Yeah, quiet, dear. Let the uh, wizards think. Since, Since perfection is the rub to him, it, it makes, makes our chances, chances mighty slim. slim. Yes, yes, I know. There ought to be something. She's no more perfect than I am. You, you need, need not, not go, go to, to such, such extremes. extremes. She's, She's much, much more, more perfect, perfect, so it seems. Yep. Wait a minute. If he really thinks he isn't a good knight, then we could tell him I've got poor judgment because I think he's an excellent knight. Uh, that's not good enough. Aha! Aha! By gum, we've seen the light. We you know, know how, how we might, might win this fight. How? What is it? When, when Sir William admitted he shouldn't be near her for fear that he'd fall, then he made it quite clear, sir. That's right. All we have to do is get them together for a while. Oh, but, but how can we do that? How? Well? We'll put her in danger so fraught up with fright that Sir William alone out of all of the knights will have courage enough to go to her rescue. Now, now won't this plan work? Now won't it? We, we ask you. Oh, yes, it sounds wonderful. We'll have to make me seem helpless, absolutely helpless. Uh, nothing really dangerous, you understand. Oh, there'll have to be some danger, Father. Well, letting him feel masterful won't hurt a bit either. <laughs> Let's get our heads together and come up with something really awful. <laughs> And while Sir William slept peacefully in his bed, a king, three wizards, and a beautiful princess conspired to change the course of his life. Then, just before dawn, the light in the northeast tower went out. And soon after that, the princess came riding out of the palace courtyard, down the streets and out through the main gates of the city. Sir William! Sir William, please open the door! I'm coming. Wait a minute. Hurry! Well, what is it, partner? Oh, it wasn't supposed to work out this way at all. That's at all. What wasn't supposed to work out this way? What's wrong? Uh, the Princess Diane has run off or been carried away or something. Oh, it's just dreadful. Carried away? Well, it really wasn't the plan. Oh, I know something just terrible. Oh, Sir William, where are you going? To see the key. Uh, wait for me. And uh, that was the plan these uh, wise men and I had thought up. But she didn't use it. She said it wasn't dangerous enough. Yeah, pretty low trick. She, she left this note. It's, it's not, not so long. long. It, it only, only mentions, mentions where she's gone. Gong? Let's see. Uh, uh, says she's gong to the Valley of the Dragon. But there's no such thing as a dragon. That's, That's right. right. On that we all agree. A, a dragon simply could not be. Then what's all excitement about? Uh, tell him, fellows. Alas, Alas though, though science tends to show the dragon theory is just not so, one dragon doesn't know this fact. Therefore, it's alive and quite intact. How about it, Sir William? Will you bring her back? 
I'll see that you get the richest reward you can think of. Well, that's really not necessary. You'll go then? Yeah, I'll go, but there isn't any such thing as a dragon. They simply don't exist. Uh-huh. Now, up to Sir William's time, there had always been some conjecture regarding the existence of dragons. After his time, there wasn't any. Don't misunderstand us. We're not claiming the knight actually killed the last dragon on Earth. In fact, we don't claim he killed one at all. But nonetheless, the facts are there. You can find them in any history book. Well, some history books. Uh, but uh, that is, uh, somewhere there's a history book with these facts in it. About two hours after Sir William left for the Valley of the Dragon, the people saw a great cloud of steam rise in the east. But of course, though it looked like it might have been made by a dragon, it could have been caused by some farmer's wife in the hill country as she prepared a hot bath for her husband. And then after that, there was the sound of a great roaring and bellowing such as an angry dragon might make. But that might only have been the farmer discovering his bath water was a little too hot as he seated himself in the tub. And then the sound of a great fight being fought. So great it caused a mountainous pall of dust that nearly covered the kingdom. But that might have only been the farmer and his wife in a little family discussion on the manner of preparing a bath. The sound of muffled thunder, such as a dragon might make when falling to earth, mortally wounded, might have been only, uh, well, uh, muffled thunder. But there was one thing. As Sir William rode out of the valley with the princess before him in the saddle, he was wearing the look of a man who had just been through a great ordeal. An ordeal that could only have been. To think you've proposed to me. Well, I suppose it does take a lot out of some men to propose. I guess I knew it from the beginning and tried to fight it, but it was bigger than either one of us. Oh, was it? We'll make beautiful music together, you and I. Back in those days, this line was brand new. Oh, and you, you risked your life to save me without any hope or reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, uh, there wasn't any reward, was there? Was there? Well, uh, uh... Oh, there was. You, you beast. Get off this horse and never speak to me again. But, uh... You heard me. But it's my horse. Besides, we're almost there. We'll settle this when we see your father. In those days, good news traveled fast. In fact, almost as fast as bad news does today. So as the knight and Princess Diane rode into the palace grounds, they found a great celebration awaiting them. The king and queen, the wise men, all the state dignitaries, and thousands of citizens were gathered to rejoice at the safe return of the couple. And it had the makings of a marvelous celebration, till the king happened to say, Well, daughter dear, you had a couple of hours with him on the way back. Did he uh, pop the question? Yes. But I wouldn't marry him if he were the last man on earth. If I were the last man on earth, I'll bet you would. I would not. Here, here now. My dear, isn't that what you wanted? He only saved me for the reward. The beast. True, everything happens to me. I refuse to take any reward. I absolutely refuse. Cut, cut, cut. Hold, Hold on, on. Wait, wait just a minute. minute. We've, We've got, got a thought. thought. Let's, Let's see, see what's, what's in, in it. it. Well, spit it out, fellows, and it better be good. We'd, We'd rather whisper, whisper what we've got. It's the best idea we've, we've ever thought. thought. What is it? Well, yeah, and that's right. Your Highness. Don't listen to him, Father. Yes, Sir William. You promised me the finest reward I could think of for rescuing your daughter. That's true. All right, sir. I ask for your daughter, the hand of Diane in marriage. <laughs> And so they were married. And strangely enough, lived happily ever after. Now there is a moral to this story. In fact, there are several. One of them might be... Don't ever let your daughter get smarter than you are, unless you can afford top-flight wise men. Uh, and uh, another would be... You can sometimes get a man to propose by simply wearing him out. And yet another moral. Worse things can happen to you than marrying a princess. <laughs> but the real moral of the story would be this one. No, no one, one on earth, earth include Diane, Diane, can lay claim to perfection. And, and if Sir William thought she could, consider that affection tends to dim men's eyes, obscuring faults for certain. And when that happens, friends, it's love. On that, we drop the curtain. <laughs>
Thank you. And this is Bill Bendix again. There was a line in our story this evening that made everything come out all right. Do you remember it? It was, and they lived happily ever after. Now... How do you know, Bill? Well, uh, how do I know what? I mean that they lived happily ever after. Well, I, 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 I just know, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Can you prove it? Now listen here, Harold Perry. I know they lived happily ever after. Because I was telling a story. When I'm telling a story, what I say goes, see? You don't have to get so steamed up about it, you fat old goat. <laughs> Who's fat? <laughs> Seriously, friends, I'd like to draw a little parallel for you. A storyteller is responsible to the characters he creates in a story. And those characters depend on the storyteller for everything they need. Now, in a sense, that's like man's relations to God. We were created by God, and we are dependent on him for everything. But unlike the characters in a book, we can ask our creator for what we need. In fact, we should. And I suppose most of us do, through prayer. Prayer is our way of talking to God, of getting the things we really need by appealing directly to our creator. Things like peace of mind, security for our families, or peace in the world. Family theater has always advocated family prayer because it's more effective. It unifies and strengthens family life. It's just as we say every week on family theater. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you William Bendix, Harold Perry, and Nancy Gates in The Fable of the Perfect Princess. Others in our cast were Verna Felton, Billy Bauckham, Howard McNear, Junius Matthews, Bob O'Sullivan, and George Taylor. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Roddy McDowell, Ruth Hussey, and Lois Butler in Lullaby of Christmas. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.